Hey, I'm Steve Knotts. Welcome to Gain Staging Tools we use in Ableton Live. Now, in the first video, we talked about the gain staging terms, where I gave you the definition of gain staging and other words you need to know, like signal to noise ratio, headroom, signal path, all that stuff. If you didn't watch that yet, go back and watch that video so you understand what I'm talking about. In this video, I'm gonna show you the actual tools we use to measure your signal level at every place along the signal path so you can end up with a mix that sounds loud and clear and drops some serious bass. Let's go into live, here we are, and let's talk about gain staging tools. Number one tool is input meters. These are very easy to misunderstand, so I'm gonna show you what they are. I'm gonna play this little track, we're gonna hear some kick drum, and I'll talk about what the input meters are. Remember, gain is a measurement of the signal level in the input of the channel. I'm making the shape of the channel. Uh, it's, not the, it's not the volume you hear, it's a measurement of what's going in the channel. So here we have a kick drum. You turn off this input, this uh, effects rack, what do you hear? The kick drum got quieter. And what do you see? Well, in the device tray, you do shift tab to see it. There are these two little peak meters in every channel. And these are your best friend. These tell you the level of signal going through the channel, which means I could mute this track on track one. We don't hear anything, but these little peak meters are still bouncing, showing you that a sound is playing in this channel. And the name of the game for us is with every sound in your mix, every channel in your mix, you want this peak level meter to be up to the top of the green. You don't want it blasting into the red the whole time. You want it up to the top of the green to maximize your signal to noise ratio so you get more of the sound you want and less of the crap you don't want. Or to make a funny food analogy, if you're eating a banana, you want to eat the banana, not the peel. So the banana is like the sound or the signal. The peel is like the noise. Nobody goes and takes a banana and just eats the whole thing. Like, like why would you do that? You want to get rid of the noise and, and get the part that you want. So these peak level meters are the input meters showing you what's coming in the channel. And our job is to raise the level of that signal. So watch what happens when I turn on this effects rack. Here's our kick drum. And what happened? It got louder. Maybe got a little more bassy. And look at these two meters. The one on the far left has about, it's about two thirds of the way up. You can see there's a little empty space at the top. The one on the right, however, after the effects unit is all the way to the top of the green. It's using pretty much all the available headroom and we can hear a louder signal. So these input level meters are your best friend for gain staging. And the whole process I'm giving you right now is go through every channel and make sure these little meters in between every plugin are up at the top of the green level to make sure that the output of every plugin gives a nice healthy signal to the input of the next plugin in the chain. And you go through all the way to the end of your mix. That's what your input meters are all about. Use them. I made a note here about peak RMS and VU meters. Uh, the Ableton meters to clear this up, they have two stages where there's like a kind of a light green part at the top and then a darker green part at the bottom. The light green is the peak level. The dark green part is the average level and these are not VU meters. A VU meter is the one with the needle and the analog equipment that bounces and shows you kind of an average level of the signal. The Ableton meters are approximating, the average part is sort of like a VU function to show you the overall average level of the mix, but um, don't make the mistake like me, don't call these VU meters because they're not. All right, let's keep going. What are some other tools we need? How about the peak level button? This is really cool because it tells you in numbers how much space you have left to use with your sound. So I'm gonna turn off the effects in the kick drum channel. I'm gonna play the kick drum. And what do we have here? There's a little round bubble, little button that I can click and reset. How did I find that? Well, I went to the top of the mixer channel, right above the pan knob. You get that little arrow to drag up and down. You can do it on the master. Just move your mouse up. Wait till it turns to an up and down arrow, and then you drag upwards until you see these meters. The square one is your track output level that shows how much the output volume is changing uh, up or down. And then above that is the peak level meter that you can click to reset. So now I'm seeing with the audio effects off and the track outputs at zero, we have minus, we have 14 dB of headroom or there's 14 decibels of level available before this kick drum hits the top of the channel. Now I'm gonna switch on my audio effects, reset the meter, and look at that, less than one dB of headroom before it goes overboard. And let's just see what happens. Turn off the limiter, crank up some compressor, up. Oh, now it's peaking, plus two dB, 
that's the definition of peaking. We were talking about peaking in video one. When a channel is going over the peak and the peak light comes on, that's called peaking. So um, the cool thing is that with Ableton's internal audio engine, you can have your tracks peak without hearing a bad sound. On an analog mixing board, when the channels start peaking, the sound starts clipping, usually a little red light comes on, and that's where you hear audible distortion that might be okay on some sounds, but in general, you don't want that. With Ableton, fortunately, you can uh, you can go above peak with your channels, and it's not a problem. But if you do it on your master, and your master channel's peaking, that will send a distorted signal out to your audio interface, and it will go through your speakers, and you will hear it. So keep the master channel in the green, the other channels, I recommend not peaking because I think it's better for gain staging if you don't, just to have an idea of what you're doing and measure stuff. But it's not the end of your universe if they do peak a little bit. And I like using a limiter. Just for a little bonus tip, look at this. The limiter ceiling, minus 0.3 dB. And look at our track, minus 0.3 dB. So our gain staging is in order on there. Kick drum sounding good, and it's ready to go. Quick note, your track output volume. If you want to use your peak level meter to read the available headroom in the channel, you got to have your level at zero dB, which means whatever sound comes in the channel is the same sound that goes out. All right, zero dB does not mean nothing. Zero dB means this track volume fader right here is not changing the input level. So when the track output meter says minus 16, that means the, the, the input is loud and this volume fader is subtracting 16 from whatever's coming in. So use that at zero, read your peak level meter. And that's a fantastic tool for knowing how much more level you have to add in the gain staging process. And make it a habit to do that on every channel. It might sound tedious, but it's really not. It's like driving a car. When you're turning, you hit the turn signal. You know, doing gain staging is no more difficult than using your turn signals when you're driving. Once you just make it a habit, it's done and you do it all the time. So we talked about the peak level meters, what that means, how do you adjust that level? How about, oh, audio effects and devices. Well, this is a whole world of stuff to learn about. I love using effects racks because you can map them with macro knobs in live and get hands-on control that you can use a push. But the basic idea is that there are lots of audio devices or plugins or audio effects that we can use to perform gain staging. Most popular one I'd say is utility because you can add and subtract gain without coloring the sound at all. And it's so easy. You get one knob, that's what you do, and it's useful. Uh, other fun places in the auto filter plugin, you can add filter drive, which adds gain and saturation. So that's an example of tone shaping or sound design. Of course, compressors have makeup gain, makeup gain. <laughs> Hot tip with compression is when you see the gain reduction meter coming down, that's showing you about how much makeup gain you should add. So in general with compression, threshold coming down, makeup gain going up, you work with those together so that the input level coming into the compressor is going to be balanced with the level coming out. Or in other words, your compression is changing the dynamics, but it's not just making it quieter. We need a whole course on compression. EQ, this is an interesting one because every band of EQ where you're boosting level is going to affect your gain staging. So when I turn up my EQ scale, just for example, on band two, we're adding four plus dB of gain, that's gonna affect your gain staging. So anytime you're EQing your sounds, if you're doing a bunch of EQ cut, be aware that you might need to add gain at the output stage of your EQ. Or if you're doing a bunch of EQ boost, you might need to subtract gain at the output stage of your EQ8 plugin to make sure that the whole signal coming out of the EQ is usable for the next plugin or whatever it is. Uh, and then we have the limiter, which of course has limiter gain to raise the signal. And limiter is interesting because it drives the signal upwards into a ceiling. So, you know, compressors do the gain staging, I mean, do the gain reduction first and then raise that whole thing louder. Limiters are kind of the opposite where they add gain first and then do the gain reduction at the very top of the, or the very end of the chain. So that's a super fast tour of some gain staging tools that we use in terms of uh, plugins and devices. And like I said, there's a whole world of other things with saturators and things that are gonna add gain and change tone and make it more fun to mix whatever sounds you're working with. But let's move on to the track output volume. And this is like the fader on a DJ mixer. So to go through a DJ mixer analogy, the um, let's say there's a record playing, you bring up a new record, there's the first knob on top is the trim knob that sets the gain of that record coming through. And what you wanna do is hit solo, listen to the new record, turn up the input trim, and look at the two VU meters on your DJ mixer to make sure the new record is bouncing the meter at the same level as the old record. Because when you push up the fader on the DJ mixer, you want the new record to drop bass the same way the old record was doing. I don't know if you DJ, but 
if you ever played a record and it comes to the main drop and it's not loud, everybody's like, what happened? Especially if you're coming in after another DJ and your first track, you drop your beat and it's like not loud. People are like, this DJ sucks, you know? So you really wanna match levels to make sure that whatever you're putting up on that fader is gonna come out loud and clear on that fader. That's an example from a DJ mixer where the input knob, the trim knob at top is setting the input gain to get the level through that channel at a loud, loud, loud level or, you know, nice sound. And then the actual fader that you move when you're DJing is the output volume. That takes the whole signal coming through the channel and sends it out to the master where you can hear it. So in Ableton, these are the track, and Ableton calls them sliders, I think. Uh, this slider is used to adjust and display the track's output signal level. I call them faders. A lot of people call them channel faders or whatever. But that's taking whatever sound is coming through your channel, and you know what it does. It sends the amount of it going out to the output. So when we are making our mix at the master channel, our gain staging includes the position of all these faders to take those sounds and make a blend at the master. What you don't want to do is have your kick drum up here peaking and press play on your mix and then try to boost everything else up to make a good mix because you're going to run out of headroom on the master channel. To make a good mix, here's a pro tip. Set your kick drum so that when the kick drum is playing by itself, the master channel shows about minus 12 on the peak level meter. You can reset that to read it. If your kick drum is putting the master up to about minus 12, usually you'll have enough space in the mix to add the other sounds around it for electronic music and you'll get a good sounding mix. So that's a little tip you can use. We'll do a lot more of that in the course with hands-on activities to set levels and do gain staging to make some tight mixes. But I'm just giving you the tools. And last, speaker power level. And I think this is where people make the biggest mistake. Most beginners make the mistake of trying to get a loud track by grabbing all their channels and pushing the levels up. And I realize that makes it sound louder for you when you're making the music, but that's not the way to get a loud mix because that pushes your channels up you run out of headroom on the master channel, and then usually people try to fix that by putting on you know, 10 compressors or this brand new VST limiter and thinking that they're making a loud track because the limiters are squashing this mix that's way too loud at the channels. That does not really work. That's like trying to push a cake through a keyhole. You know what I mean? It's like not the right way to do your gain staging. The right way to do it is to keep your faders down and turn your monitors up, all right? Faders down means channels lower in the mix. You keep headroom on the master so your master is not all the way up to the top of the peak level. And then when you wanna feel loud in the room or in the headphones, you grab your volume knob and turn it up. Now I'm not telling you to blow your speakers, I'm not telling you to go deaf, and I'm definitely not telling you to damage your own hearing. What I'm saying is that the best way to make a mix that's gonna feel loud is to preserve the dynamic range and mix at a monitor volume where the monitors give you the power of the sound. Really, if you think about it at a club, the power people feel in the sound system is coming from the amps and the speakers. The DJ mixer is at a constant level. It's just the same level all night. And the, whether the mix is loud or not, it really comes from how big your amps are. So if you want a louder club or a louder sound system, don't go and turn up your DJ mixer. Go and buy another subwoofer. That's how, that's how people are gonna feel the music. That's so important. Keep your faders down, turn your monitors up to make it feel loud, and leave it to your mastering engineer to take the final stereo mix or two mix and raise that up to um, commercial level, whatever that might be for your Luff's readings. So uh, amps down, amps up, faders down, monitors up. A great mix. You know what a great mix is. It's loud, clear. There's nice stereo width. Every frequency range has something going on. And the bass is tight and focused where you can feel the kick drum, the sub bass. They're all individual elements that you can feel them coming through like, mm. and it's not like this mushy mush that's going whoop, 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 and just like flubbing out your subs. That's not what you want. And gain staging is how to get that tight low end so your mix feels great. Your track drops. People want to play it again because it feels good. So gain staging activities. Well, First, we do gain staging at the individual channels with what sounds are coming on the input, reading our little input meters. Second, we do gain staging with our track volumes going out to the master channel, where we read the peak level of the master channel and make a good solid mix. Unfortunately, you don't learn this by watching a video. You learn it by doing hands-on activities inside Ableton Live in the hands-on session lesson tutorials that I'm building. So that's the next step is to join this course, download the Ableton Live pack, open it up, and you're going to see something like this with activities, set kick drum input gain. I take you step-by-step step through the actual activities using macro knobs on our effects units, and you learn about how to do gain staging with problem solving on different sounds, the theory of it, go through the terms again, and doing it with hands-on activities where automation shows you what to do, and then you do it yourself to make a great mix, and you end up making a mix of this track that sounds pretty good. So that's what it's all about. Look at this, read the headroom. Okay, activity, raise sub-bass gain. I give you numbers, take you through, 
I'm not gonna go through the whole course right now. It's a lot of fun. I'm super excited about it because this is something that you need to do in every piece of music you make for the rest of your life, whether you're in a hardware studio, recording singers or recording a band, or if you're only in Ableton with samplers and you know synths and all that kind of stuff, it's always part of what you do as a music producer. Now you know the terms for talking about gain staging, the tools to use in Ableton, and hopefully how to apply those tools to your DJ career or whatever else you're doing to help you make better mixes that sound awesome. Grab this course and I'll see you inside. Thanks.